Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jane Ryan. I am from Airy Lighting. I'm here today with Mike Wagner, and we will be presenting the Airy Sky Panel and all the new features that we've been able to add this year. Mike? Sure, so I am Mike. And yeah, we released uh, the Sky Panel, we announced the Sky Panel a year ago, at uh, NAB a year ago, and uh, it was uh, received very warmly by uh, our customers and by the industry. And uh, year to date, we've had an extremely great success with the Sky Panel. A lot of our customers just love it. It's been used on a, a lot of major motion pictures, including uh, Rogue One, uh, the, one of the Star Wars movies, the latest Star Wars movie, Episode Eight, uh, which is in production right now, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, The Huntsman, a lot of other movies. Um, and people really just love uh, this fixture. It's an ultra bright LED soft light. It's fully tunable. You could tune it from 2800 degrees all the way up to 10,000 degrees Kelvin. It has plus or minus green Kelvin, uh, excuse me, plus or minus green correction and also hue and saturation. And this year at NAB we're announcing a new firmware update for the fixture that adds 10 major new features. So um, We have a features film, which I'm going to roll now, which does a really great job of showing the basic features as of last year before the firmware upgrades. So as fun as it is to see a video, to actually see the product itself happen is much more exciting, at least for those of us that get to play with them every day. Um, we have a sky panel with us here. One thing of note is we also have the sky panels illuminating the V&H uh, studio right here. Um, so this is, Mike, go ahead and tell what you're doing as you're doing it. And so I just took it up to 100% intensity, so you can see it's quite bright. In fact, it's brighter than a 2,000 watt tungsten soft light. I'll bring it down so maybe the cameras could see it a little bit better. But you could tune it from 2,800 degrees to 10,000, as I had mentioned. And you could do plus or minus green correction. And then, of course, you could switch the mode and bring it into a saturated color mode and change all to different hues of that color and then change the saturation. Um, and as the video mentioned, you can do AC power, you can do DC power. We do have a full line of accessories that support it, including the egg crates, honeycombs, barn doors. We have a new accessory this year. It's called a Skybender. One of the things that we've found is that people are using the, the sky panel for a lot of uh, sight washes and 
green screens. And one of the important things is to have a very even, smooth illumination when you're doing this. The sky bender is precisely for that. Um, it's um, uniform from top to bottom. So a very even distribution of the light. Uh, it slides into the accessory slot, which is just in front of that white panel on the front of the fixture. Um, and the next slide shows how even this wall was illuminated with these panels. And it's a very simple mathematical formula to figure out how many of these fixtures you need um, it's, and at what height. It's a very simple, it's an amazing, it's just mirrored louvers. But the big thing this year is the firmware upgrades that we've been able to, or the new features we've been able to add. It's a new way of thinking about lights. I mean, suddenly you don't have a new fixture you're buying for new features. You're doing a firmware upgrade. It's basically a computer that does light. So this year we have two, 10 major features. The first three that we're going to talk about talk about why do we have this USB slot in our light. First one, if there are any errors, errors, you can download this. It saves it as a text file. You can email it to our service department. No more of this. I'm going to FedEx my light to wherever. It may be necessary, but sometimes all that's necessary is to reset your light to factory standards. And our service department can look at their error logs and tell you what's going on fairly quickly. Um, we can save and load user presets via the USB stick. Um, sometimes you have certain colors that you love to use, and you use these colors repeatedly. What you, on, the, uh, on the panel itself, you can save 10 of those presets. You can download them to your USB stick. If you're rent or, renting a fixture in Seattle or Mozambique or wherever you're going, you can stick that USB stick in your panel, and you have your presets right there for you. Similar, you have your fixture settings. If this is exactly the settings we want for this fixture, but we have to do 200 of them because we're putting them overhead, as a number of these features have done, you can go from fixture to fixture with your USB stick, and it loads those settings for you. You don't have to monkey around with the onboard controls in the back. The next set of features we've added is about control, what kind of controlling of your, fi of your fixtures. We've had DMX um, control since the fixtures have been manu started manufacturing. Um, now what we've done this year is R RDM. And what is RDM? R RDM stands for Remote Device Management. All it is is it's a way of the, the console communicating to the fixture and the fixture communicating back. So you can do things. You can, you can do your DMX addresses, DMX protocols, special modes, fan modes, display settings. RDM is a really flexible way of controlling your lights. We've also done ArtNet. What is ArtNet? ArtNet is simply the data, the digital data that's coming out of your consoles going up a, an Ethernet cable. That's great, except it's just data when it gets to the light. What it does is the ArtNet interprets that data into DMX protocol. So what it can do is if you have a smaller studio, say you have four fixtures, you're, you're saving money. You don't have to put in an art net, I mean, a f gateway. Um, you know, you, this can be eight to $1,000 in a small studio, and suddenly it's a very affordable option to put in a few panels. Um, art net, uh, is that pretty good? Or? Yeah, uh, one, of the mo one of the really interesting things with art net as well is that you could go in to the fixture using Ethernet and use set standard networking devices in the, uh, to distribute the data. And then you could also use the fixture as a gateway to daisy chain other fixtures using 5-pin DMX. So go in with Ethernet and then daisy chain out with a 5-pin DMX. So it makes it a really easy to kind of uh, put multiple fixtures in one rig. Um, so the next set of features that we've added, there's three different um, Mo uh, lighting modes that we've added. Um, one of them is the dimming curves. There's different, when you're dimming your fixture, there's different options. One is logarithmic. As you can see in the side, the logarithmic gives you a lot of control at the top end, but when it comes down to the low end, it's very quick. It's a lot less control. But exponential control gives you a lot more control in your dimming in the low end. 
This is the default. This is what most lights use now. There's linear, which is pretty self-explanatory. And there's also the S-curve. So if you want more control in the top and more in the bottom, you can do that. The mid-range is not, you don't have as much control. We've added DMX fan control. Why is this important? Well, if you're in a grid and you have a lot of features, sometimes you don't want to cr crawl up to adjust the fan. So on your slider, it starts with what, from 0 to 3% on your slider, whatever is the default of what the fixture itself is set, up, set at. If you slide up, you can go low, variable, high. Um, the top one is the most important thing. You can actually turn the fan off via DMX. This, um, there, you really don't want to run it continuously with the fan off. LEDs do produce heat. But, and so in the low mode, it's a very, very quiet fan anyways. Most people don't hear it. One person told me my, my talent breathes heavier than that. Um, but there are times when you need absolute silence. You can turn your fan off. You can run it for about 15 minutes. The fixture will give you information if it's getting too warm, if those LEDs might be damaged. It's not going to let you damage it. it. It will auto shut off before it gets to that point. But as Mike was explaining the other day, if you're doing a, a shoot, you can do a shoot for 15 minutes with your fan off, turn it back down just a little bit to about you know, 80%, get your fan running high, cool off those LEDs, and you can go for take two. Real simple. We also have a tungsten mode. The tungsten mode mimics the same dimming curves as tungsten light itself. So as you... You know, it, you're matching the dimming curve, so it goes down, and as it gets warmer at the bottom, the color temperature warms up, and you get a really nice warm at the bottom. It also emulates the strike on and off. So at the bottom of the dim dimming curve at t in tungstens, it's not an immediate shut off. There's an afterglow. This will ma this matches it. We also have a low-end mode. What the low-end mode enables us is it's a smoother dimming curve at the low end. The, so it's a little smoother to zero. The lower light levels on the, on the low end, you just have a lot more options. Ex additionally, you have more accurate co um, co correlated color temperatures and rendition in the low end. This is the really exciting part th that we've been able to add to the fixture this year. We have gel libraries. What, so do you want to take this one, Mike, the, about the? Yeah, sure. I'd love this part. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've always been able to create a very wide selection of colors. But now, in, through software, we're actually able to implement a really wide selection of Roscoe and Lee gel libraries. Um, and so we're, we have 277 different gels within the light. And you could simply navigate uh, through the, the menu to select all of these different colors. So the great thing about this, too, is that uh, all of our lights are calibrated. You know, we, in the, at the factory, we're able to read what the LEDs are doing and then calibrate them to make sure that we're hitting the exact color that we're supposed to. And using that calibration data, we're also able to apply that to the gels in order to get really, really accurate representation of those gel colors. Um, we're also, once you select a color, you could also select um, the color temperature base. So you could select either 3200 or you could select 5600 degrees Kelvin, depending on what you want your starting color temperature to be. And then also you have the option of either selecting the best color rendition version of that color, that gel, or you could select the best or the brightest version of that gel. So we're able to actually change the LEDs in a way that can give you both options. And we also have uh, a DMX protocol for these gels, so, so that if you didn't want to control them from the control panel, you could actually select the gel that you're looking for through a DMX protocol. So it's really, really flexible in that way. And we have different uh, categories that we've kind of separated the gels into so that you could find the gel really quickly. So for example, color corrections. We have uh, Roscoe's cow color. We have cosmetic filters from Lee with inside the uh, fixture, and also all of the different color effects filters as well. And just uh, as an illustration, this is what 277 colors look like. In fact, if you think about it, because we're able to do both tungsten and daylight versions of those colors, it's, it's double the amount of colors that we're able to generate with the gels. 
Um, and so that's a really exciting feature, having the ability to really uh, speak that language of color on a set and being able to, uh, you know, communicate, you know, you know what that color does or what that gel does, and now you're able to very quickly call it back up uh, to the fixture and, and have it there and have it very accurate. So just to recap, the new features of our of the firmware 2.0 for released in, in AB, you save you can save your error logs. It helps you get much faster service, much easier service. Save and load presets. Any one of, you can save your 10 presets on your fixture. You you can save your settings. So if you're doing multiple fixtures, really easy to go from fixture to fixture and set up what that setting, the same setting in that fixture. We have RDM, so the fixtures can talk back to you. You have ArtNet, so the, you can, it's much easier to wire multiple fixtures up in the grid, much less wire. Um, dimming curves, we have the DMX fan control. You, the tungsten mode, so as you're integrating a, a studio with tungsten and, and LED fixtures, you can emulate that same light. The low end mode, if you're working in a very low end mode, you have much more control of that mode. And finally, the Roscoe and the gel libraries. So the great thing is that this uh, is available starting uh, today, or actually it was yesterday. yesterday. Um, so this is available as a, uh, a free download from our website that you could go and just download it, put it onto a USB stick. You put that into the back of the fixture, and you could do the update that way if you have a sky panel. So it makes it really, really easy to do the update. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.